guess what? <laughs> yes, We're live what in Josie's knees. Josie's. <laughs> <laughs> he paid five B's. <laughs> he paid the door five tax. B's I'm just the Scott knees. kid. This is Noah Green. This is Palace de Chilerino. This is Thursday. This is should not start every sentence. It's a poorly constructed then <laughs> paragraph. Anyways, nice. welcome, sir, to our humble abode and for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. So initially we met at Punk Fest last year and yep. you were just doing the acoustic thing. Yep. You were formally, um, I would say what, the founding member and leader of Villainy of Thieves. Yep. And so talk to us about um, that transition from band life as a whole band to now doing just acoustic things. It's a lot easier. <laughs> there was one person to ask if I can play a show. And it's Hi, self. myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in that sense, it's not that bad. Um, but definitely in how I write songs, it's... Kind of the same in the sense that I'll write them on my own and then I'll bring them to like, or I would have brought them to a full band, but now there's just not that process. But there was really never anything where they could be like, no, we're not going to do that one. We don't think it's that, it's that good. Um, so in that sense, it's, you know, kind of easier. Um, but definitely in the sense of it's a lot harder to play shows because you don't have like other people backing you up mm. um and that's where i really get into like well are these songs actually really that great um or was it just that i had like you know people backing me up that like could make those songs as good as they could actually be mm. um but yeah and yeah it's it's been a the transition has actually been like me playing solo things being in villainy of thieves bringing solo things to that project and now it's like turning songs I wrote for Villainy of Thieves into solo songs again that I can play on my own. So. so how long have you been playing guitar and do you play anything else? I don't play anything else. I gave up learning any other instrument about six years ago. I tried to learn piano and I was like not gonna happen um, but I've been playing guitar for 19 years holy shit yeah <laughs> when 19. did you pick it up <laughs> yeah uh, 12 or 13 my mom had a guitar in her closet and i was like i'm gonna play guitar and she was like okay sure whatever just like use that and then i started playing her guitar and then i bought an electric like three months later um and then started taking lessons first song i ever learned blink 182 damn it um and then from there on me and actually the bass player for Villainy of Thieves we've been playing ever since then. We were in bands in high school. Uh, we were in like a ska punk band in high school, which is like, just like raucous, crazy shit. It, <laughs> there's actually a place in Madison that <coughs> won't have shows because of our band. Um, I don't know if you guys knew Offend Your Friends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Offend Your Friends and Cash Crop, the band I was in, mm -hmm. we had a show at the Wilmar Center. And we trashed their parking lot. Like, it was bad. Like, there was, like, a 175 that was, like, smashed off somebody's car. And it was pretty bad. Uh, and we, like, smoked a blunt inside of it. It was, like, this whole thing. And the Wilmar Center, to this day, will be like, yeah, we won't have shows because there was this one band that did <laughs> bad things there. And it's like, that was my band. With the Fender Friends, which, yeah, we hung out a couple times at like a couple shows but i haven't seen them since <laughs> you offended everything right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you know looking forward um we played getting worse on tuesday night as a sneak peek for this evening mm -hmm. are there you know looking forward are you planning on recording and putting anything else out now as you um yeah solo things probably in a couple months i'll probably try to release like another ep I try to do like one a year um, and put it up on Bandcamp and then, you know, tour for like a week or two behind it. Um, so hopefully in the next couple months, it'll, I don't know, I always say I'm going to record and then like four weeks beforehand, I'm like, oh shit, I, I 
production after like put in all that work <laughs> and i'll be like working on lyrics up until the point where i'm recording and usually when i record too i'll have like a music stand and i'll like write lyrics there and be like no say that don't say that mm. um and then hopefully within another couple of weeks after that i'm like writing some ska song punk song kind of things um, so I'll probably try to do another EP of some band that might not exist yet next year. <laughs> Projections, a phantom band? Yeah, yeah, or at least songs where I'll be like, these are the demos, and I'll be able to send them to a couple people that want to be in a ska band, and I'll be like, hey, can you play on these, and then try to get recordings together before we, like, try to play out at all. When you say ska band, because I'm interested, there are mm -hmm. many inceptions of ska. Yep. Uh, for you, what is what is ska? Do you have horns, or is it just a three piece where it's just upbeats, which give it the ska sound, or, or what is ska to you? Uh, second guitar lesson I ever took was how to play ska, and essentially I learned it was double time reggae mm -hmm. where you are playing on either twos and fours or on the end of every beat depending on how you want to think of it it's kind of the same way either way you slice it um so you know that one and two and dun, 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 dun. um so that's kind of what i'm going for uh in general with ska uh you don't need horns most of my favorite ska bands don't have horns so that'd be like you know op ivy leftover crack um, those kind of bands, but I mean, Streetlight Manifesto is, you know, probably one of my biggest inspirations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Toke, the songwriter for them, is I, one time I was like playing my girlfriend, I was like, yeah, this is Toke, and like, you know, you're gonna hear the obvious influence. And like, I played her the first song, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's where you got that from. And I was like, yeah, he's really good at like classical guitar playing and that kind of stuff. So that was kind of where I got the whole you write a song that's good on an acoustic and then bring it to like a full band and they'll flesh it out, which is what I really liked about Villainy Thieves. I mean, they were great musicians. Um, yeah. Any talk of that happening again? Uh, our drummer just actually got into the University of Texas at Austin for a graduate program. So we're probably done, mm. um, so he'll be moving there like this summer. Um, it's also my brother, um, and then uh, the bass player pretty much has like a pretty decent job that he's not really willing to quit. Um, so that was kind of like the wall we hit with our band, where it was like, well, we can bring it to this level, but we'll never be able to like do it to the like. Okay, we'll be able to like tour from like Thursday through Sunday, that kind of thing. Right. Um, so yeah. How like we have a band coming called Houston and the Dirty Rats yeah. from New Jersey. Yep. And they're doing a hundred shows in a hundred days. I'm like, how do you take off that much time to go travel all over the US to play that? With you, do you like what are your stints as far as a tour is concerned? Do you just kind of do the weekend warrior thing that Thursday through Sunday? Or are you like, I'm going for a few months and I'm going to all these places to go play? Uh, I'll be playing with them, uh, what is it, May 25th? It's in Oshkosh? Yeah, Sheboygan. Oh, Sheboygan, yes. Um, the <laughs> other, Valley. Yeah, yeah, the other <laughs> place up there. Um, you, like for the past year, I had a really good job where I could say, music is what I like to do and music is why I work this job. So I was able to take a lot of time off and I was able to be like, I can't work that weekend. I'm going to be at Milwaukee Punk Fest or something like that. Um, but you have to have, I think the first thing would be to have a really good worth, uh, work ethic where like when I'm at work, I am working and I'm not doing anything else. And, that's kind of like what I'm focused on there. And then when you need a week off, you know, in August or whatever, then they'll be like, oh yeah, we'll work with you on that. Um, so it, it's a really difficult kind of line to handle. And even, you know, well, what am I going to do? And if I get a show next week and somebody's like, hey, can you just like play in Wausau? I'll give you 50 bucks. It'll be like, ooh, but 
I have this job that, you know, I don't want to necessarily quit. So you always kind of have to like walk between that line of not caring about your job, but also caring about it enough where you work hard and then people realize that like, oh, he has that thing that he likes to do mm -hmm. and we need to like actually kind of accommodate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with you had mentioned with recording and, and trying to put something out, how do you record? Do you go someplace, record, and then send off your tracks for mastering? Do you do it all of yourself, or how does that work? Uh, usually, I'll take, like, with the last recording I did, um, it was a split EP with um, somebody named Margaret Dreyer, who's mm -hmm. an artist in Madison. She's great. Um, that was something where I took at least two months beforehand. And I was like, all right, I have these eight weeks, and of those eight weeks, you have, you know, X amount of days, and I'm going to take, like, the most amount of those days, so it was probably, you know, five out of every seven days of those weeks, and, like, practice, record for four to five hours, probably. Wow. Um, no, it was, it's the most effort I've ever put into anything. And, but it really paid off in the sense of the recording um, engineer, uh, they were just like, no, you did this really well. And it, the recording was done really inexpensively because I had put so much time and effort into it. There was, after the first night, I was like, oh yeah, no, those songs aren't working out. So I'm going to like work on them and then I'll come back tomorrow. And she was like, wait, when did you work on them? And I was like, oh, like midnight to 2 a.m. when I got done with this. She was like, oh, okay. And then you show up here at like 9 a.m. So. <laughs> Music is light. Yeah. And like anytime you're recording too, I always think like I'm paying this person, you know, 25 to $40 to 60 to $80 an hour to like be here. So like I might as well put in as much time as possible into the, you know, preparation for that. Mm. So that's, yeah. That's a good work ethic because doing and being a musician is just like having a job, right? <laughs> Except you don't get paid for it. Right. That's, and it was crazy too because, um, you know, the person, and when you listen to my music, like, it's this completely different, like, kind of uh, feel from when I'm actually, like, working on it. And she was like, oh, yeah, you can drink. And I was like, no, I don't drink when I record. And she was like, wait, what? <laughs> and it's like, you're like, you play like drunk punk, like folk music. And I was like, no, but like, I don't do any of that. So it was like this weird experience where she was like, are you serious? Like, you're just going to be <laughs> completely sober. So yeah, no, and I try to work hard, especially I'm paying to be there too. So it's like, you know, and I was getting a really good deal on recording. Um, that's awesome. So she was just like, yeah, no, that's great. Do you um, go, I, I asked this of everybody, um, do you go through a distributor to distribute your music onto different platforms, or do you go out and post them on free sites? Uh, Bandcamp, that's, yeah, I, I'm super lazy with my solo music, too. Like, people are always like, you need to do this, and I'm just like, yeah, I'll get to that when I get time. I don't get time for that. But, <laughs> so, I, and even when, I think somebody bought, like, I don't know if it was Villainy Thieves, but a different or one of my solo albums and I was like why would you pay for that that's weird like who does that like people yeah. pay for don't you think they should pay for it you, oh yeah you, totally yeah you no. just paid somebody to record it yeah no I mean people sh and you know one of the weird things about music these days it's like you know villainy of thieves I think are, that was like 600 700 to record wow um and you know have I made that money back probably but, you know, where the finances actually lie, like, I have no idea at this point. Wow. That's a lot of money to put into something. And that I think you're probably, maybe the second, I think Royal Blue talked about price as far as that's concerned. So this isn't like, you know, a laissez-faire thing. I think that, um, or at least recently, we've kind of gotten flack. Well, music is, you know... I don't know, like the underbelly of society right, it almost yeah. gets this feel, but it's really a dedicated, hard thing that is not just a hobby and lots of thought, time and effort go into it. So yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, 
a job you don't get paid for. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you, um, as far as like booking shows, is it easy or hard for you to book? Um, we've run across a whole bunch of people recently that's like, oh, the hardest thing is trying to get in anywhere because if I'm going out to a place I've never been, lots of people aren't willing to take, you know, a chance on having me play unless I do all of the work or even then it's a no. And so talk about setting up shows, easy, difficult, and like, do you go out and find the band first or the venue first or how does that work for you? It depends. A lot of times, like, if I'm going to do, you know, maybe a five-day, six-day tour, um, usually what I try to do is I pick, like, the furthest spot that I'll go to. So, um, uh, me and Margaret Dreyer, we did one uh, last year. I think it was, like, a five-day tour. Started in Madison, and then we went all the way out to, like, Indiana, which isn't that far. Um, but we had the Indiana show, and then we, like, kind of booked backwards. Ah. Um, so it depends, and, I mean, sometimes, too, it'll be, like, oh, crap, I just found this show that I got booked to, or I got booked at a festival in, like, Michigan. And then you're like, oh, okay, so I'm going to try to actually book a couple shows back. Mm -hmm. And really what you're trying to do is just, like, you know, get a couple shows where you might get five to six people out there and then, you know, hopefully they'll buy some merch or something like that. And with solo things, it's like really hard. Like, you know, you're only one person and the type of people who typically want to see solo artists are people who play music. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, okay, I'm just like, you know, chilling at a bar and I want to see this guy like talk about like his like, you know, mental issues that are going on. Like, that's not really the uh, demographic, necessarily, that wants to hear. It's a free counseling session. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but you got to listen to the guy complain the entire time. <laughs> and then maybe give him five bucks for a CD or something like that. Um, so, yeah. It's, yeah, with booking, it's always, and a lot of times, too, you just get lucky. It'll be like, hey, uh, I'm on tour and the Sunday night that you had a show, can I just like get on, play 45 minutes? And the person will be like, oh yeah, that's great. And then like randomly they give you 80 bucks because you did that because you were on tour. Ah. Um, so it, it really depends and it's a crapshoot. A <laughs> good marketing ploy. Even if you play locally, you should just put on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm locally on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's food for thought. That's copywritten material now, yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah. You heard it here first. Um, with that being said, and you've mentioned merch now, do you have merch? I do. What do you have? I have shirts. Um, I have, like, a couple CDs probably left. It's all out of my car. But, um... I have uh, new buttons, which, like, we only did, like, a 20 run because the person just got, like, a new, like, press and everything. Um, but the, that design will probably be the uh, cover of my next EP. Um, so, yeah, shirts, CDs, stuff on Bandcamp, all that kind of stuff. So how would people go about purchasing your things who are listening tonight? Just talk to me. No green Facebook. But message me. And if you're willing to pay me money for merchandise, I'll send it wherever. <laughs> Unless it's, like, prohibitively expensive. But yeah. <laughs> Right. Let's send it to Hawaii. Actually, when we sent merch out, it was less expensive to send to Hawaii than it was to Denton, Texas. What? I paid eight bucks to send it to Denton, Texas. Regret. And I paid four to Hawaii. But was it? It's the same thing. It was same the same weights, package, same, same everything. Yeah. It was weird. I don't understand. Thanks, USPS. Do they... But, so, my lame-ass job is that I send bike parts to people. So that's crazy because we wouldn't offer free shipping to somebody in Hawaii. Right. And, like, my sister lives there, and I've sent her things, and it's, like, 70 fucking dollars, and it's fucking whatever. Um, but, yeah, no, that's, that's really weird. Yeah. Denton would be I have no clue why. I, I asked and the lady was just like, it's 810. It'll be there in four days. I'm like, how is it getting to Hawaii quicker? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I'm yeah. confused. Yeah. Never mind. Like there's a boat. Like, <coughs> I don't. Know, either that or fly. Yeah. Right. Crazy. Like, yeah. Maybe. Maybe because the main terminal's in Milwaukee and that's just right there by a plane. And 
I don't know. Who what knows? do you yeah, think is uh, going yeah. on a planet? Let's Who knows? Please explain the wonders of the Postal Service. Yeah, USPS, I'm sure they're watching. Um, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> me. I know yeah. someone who worked at yeah. the post office. Um, bike parts, like as in a manual you pedal bike, or like, vroom, vroom, I have a motorcycle, I'm cool bike. Manual pedal. Okay. Yeah. Those are cooler to me, though. Yeah. What? <laughs> don't. We got a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All the things oh, he no, drives I mean, are it's... big like his mouth. Love you, Mikey! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with Bandcamp, there is a little merch thing that you can have. Do you have stuff on there? Did you know? Should I? No. I, my, I'm not going to lie, I'm really bad with Facebook uh, phone things. Phone things? Like calling people? Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it, like if I could have, if I could pay somebody to do every social media manager <coughs> merchandise thing, I would do it. I'd be like, yeah, take whatever cash you'll get, but there's no money involved, so there's like, you know, nothing to actually send somebody, but no, that'd be, uh, yeah. Hmm. Have you thought about, um doing i mean you said you're bad at it but you have a villainy and thieves page have you thought about doing one just for yourself and just putting the band camp link up there and like, i should probably do that that's something to look into but yeah no i haven't yeah. <laughs> you, um with upcoming shows do you have anything in the works where people can catch it out and about uh the shaborgan show so that's 525 mm -hmm. um and that'll be with houston Dur and the dirty rats uh, Squid's playing that, yep. um, uh, Darren's his actual name. Yes. Uh, probably a bunch of things that I should have memorized before this. I'll be playing in Marshfield tomorrow. Marshfield. Um, so Steve Apfel, or Apfel, uh, he set that up. Um, he does like a Friday night lights thing. Um, so that would be cool. And I mean, he's a great promoter and always does like really good work. And I've played in like the Chestnut Center before, uh, so that would be cool. Um, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. A couple of cool bands too. Uh, Granny Panties, which has like, I think a member of We the Heathens. I love that name. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, Granny it's, Panties? <laughs> and I think a member of uh, Michael Strike and the Goddamn Band is in that too. Um, so I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, yeah. As a solo act, with you know playing shows out like you just said is it um easy as, or, or difficult to like book with all these you know other bands it's just you and i asked old wolves that once before and he's like i'll play anything it doesn't matter and everyone's kind of receptive to it but like when you have you know are the bands that you play with well receiving of you Ooh, that's a great question. Um, and it's funny too because Old Wolves would say that. And that, like, he has a really great attitude on booking where it's like, it seems like he'll book kind of wherever and whenever. And he does like weekends and he's just like, you know, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. every weekend of like what March through October, he's going to like be playing in a different place even if it's like spring green or i think he's playing in like lake mills mm -hmm. and like i told some people i worked with i was like hey this guy's gonna be lake mills like you should check him out um but it's just it's difficult to get people to a solo show and then it's also difficult to get people to solo i mean my stuff too it's like unless you like the people i like it's kind of hard to like convince people to go to those shows mm. um but generally Especially like Milwaukee Punk Fest or different places where I've been like uh, Villainy and Thieves had to cancel a bunch of shows from August through like I think it was March and like I, I just picked them up as a solo artist mm. and most people there were cool with it like they're just like oh I never like heard the songs like that and you know they had liked the music before but they're like oh I never heard like the lyrics to that particular song or something. So it usually goes pretty well, but it depends on the audience and what they're expecting and that kind of stuff. Did you make your own CDs? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the Villainy of Thieves we paid somebody to do, so that was super duper in Madison. Which, like, I think they pay, I think it was, like, maybe two bucks a CD or something like that. Yeah. Um, so they were, like, a really good press company, and they were really good, and they worked with us on everything. Mm -hmm. um, but all of the solo stuff, I just try to keep it, like, as cheap as possible so I can, like, you know, sell CDs for a dollar or three dollars. Yeah. Who does your artwork? Uh, that's Margaret Dreyer. She does all of my artwork. She's, like, great artist and she has this like really weird cartoony style but she like uh when i was making new shirts i was just like i don't know what the fuck i want i just like want a shirt to say no or green whatever and she's like okay well it's gonna say like lonely drunk folk punk and i was like that's fucking great like what <laughs> and then she's like okay so and we're gonna have an upside down cross on it. i was like that's fucking great. That's like the best <laughs> thing I've ever fucking heard. And she like chiseled out the block and everything. And we printed shirts. So she does all my artwork. She did our, the cover of our EP that um, I'm on. I think, yeah, she did my first EP too. So she does all my artwork and she's great. She probably won't give you as good as deals as I get on her artwork. <laughs> but <laughs> if you can get artwork... Uh, Margaret Dreyer, Maggie Denman, Madison, Wisconsin. She does fucking fantastic work. She can work, you know, uh, uh, not Pro Tools, but um, weird random uh, programs that you need for... Programs doing so, program stuff? Yeah. Like cameras yeah. doing camera stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. The shutter goes off. It's just oh, a camera circle. doing camera stuff. Um... With, you know, having kind of this production now as you, as just your own um, thing, do you have other solo artists that you go out and see? Um, have you ever thought about throwing just like an acoustic show with, you know, all these other people? Yeah, yeah. Um, Old Wolves would definitely be somebody... Um... There's a guy in Madison called Eric Doucette. Um, he was in a band called Circus Fires, and now he's in bands called Street Names. And, like, one of the... Every time I see him, I'm just like, God damn it. Like, he's he's one of those songwriters who just, like, makes you feel like a piece of shit. It's like, why do I even try this? But Eric Doucette is, like... Uh, he is this one song called... I think it's St. Agnes. And it's about a hospital he was born in. And it's also about, like, his father and, like, when they were getting, like, tests done on him. And it's, like, one of the best songs I've ever heard. Um, so him, obviously, Margaret Dreyer would be another one. Um, in Madison, or in Lake Mills, there's a guy named Joel Campmill. Um, he, one of his songs is called uh, New Language. And, like, that's, it's a song where every time I listen to him, I'm just, like, that's the best song like it's the best song ever written by somebody i actually know and i can actually talk to so he's like great and then you know moving kind of further out and uh, andy pritchard great songwriter too um and he's somebody too where it's like i listen to him but i've and like i know him on social media but like not really so like you know when i mean i'm gonna be like oh know you but not really you know it's like this weird kind of like gray area. we're just internet friends and i don't know how to break that barrier yeah, like, you, yeah, like, <laughs> oh i liked all your posts like it's this weird kind of like yeah i'm a weirdo that when we go out places i know people stare at us and they're like I'm like, right, hi, yeah. and I'll yeah. know their name because they'll comment stuff. Yeah. Like, we just went to Villa Punk Nights in uh, Chicago, and I walked out, I was like, you're Kevin, and he's like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm Jess. Oh, you're here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a real yeah. human. Like, right. outside of the square you watch yeah. me in, yeah. I'll still say hi to you in real life, in, yeah. in RL. Yeah. <laughs> IRL in real life. <laughs> yes, he was here on the show um, in March. Nice. He came and did a show with us. So, um, and that kid's just busting stuff out left and right. Like, tons of shows booked, and he's really, I don't know, pushing hard to do that's music like as a thing. Youthful energy. That's Youthful bullshit. energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
tips or tricks for anybody out there who's like, I want to do music and where do I start? What, what would be your advice to anybody who could be aspiring to be either their own act or a band? Just write songs. Write songs constantly, do it over and over again, and more importantly, uh, record them, listen to them, critique them yourself. Like I just listened to actually everything I've ever put out. I was like, how do I say this without incriminating myself? Possibly over the limit, <laughs> driving back from Green Bay. <laughs> um, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna just like listen to myself and like just be weird about it and like critique it and like go back and like listen what was wrong or what did I hit there that made a weird sound. Um, and that was something where like when I did, I was like, okay, that's, you know, I heard that and like, I'm okay with it and like, it'll be fine. You know, I can deal with that section, but when I move on, I wanna, you know, fix those weird mistakes that I didn't like. Um, and then perform them in front of people, go to open mics. Um, and if the song doesn't work with just you and acoustic, it's probably not that great of a song. And just retool it, like just keep going over and over again. And what I will always tell people, I mean, my when I first started recording music, I wouldn't let anybody listen to what I recorded, especially now. Like, no way. Like, I have a couple CDs that I recorded and I sold on tours, but if somebody was like, hey, can I listen to that? I'd be like, no, no way. Like, I don't even know how the guy I paid to, like, record that, like, sat through that entire recording process <laughs> without telling me, like, you're a piece of garbage and you need to learn how to sing. So, that's... Do you think you've gotten better, Noah? Oh, yeah, no. And there was something, there was, like, this switch that happened when I was, like, a certain age where people were like, oh yeah, no, I really like like the way you sing. And I was like, nobody likes the way I sing. What are you talking about? But <laughs> you just get older than people and better at people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. So how often do you go back and rework something? Like some of the songs we heard tonight, obviously they're not their first like run, but like, do you listen to something and you're like, fuck it five times over and then maybe the sixth time it's okay yeah yeah no yeah that's that's yeah and sometimes it'll be like you know people will be like well what did you hear in that sixth time and it's like you know i didn't sing that part right or whatever you know uh yeah and then just a lot of like rewriting lyrics usually i try to if i don't feel embarrassed that somebody would hear the lyric actually that's when I'm like okay that'll be fine because like you're not like you don't feel weird about it but anytime where I'm like oh that lyric's not that great or something like that then I try to be like okay well when you perform it in public somebody's gonna have to hear that so if you don't feel right about it when you're listening to it recorded then you might as well just change it how often do you practice oh god <laughs> so, um, I try to practice four hours a day. Um, that's just guitar. Um, if I'm lucky, I get to practice six hours a day. That would be like two hours classical guitar, two hours of jazz, and then two hours of singing, songwriting. So that would be like the last two hours that I would spend on things. Um, and that would be like me writing songs and stuff like that. But usually it's classical guitar and jazz comes first and then all the songwriting comes afterwards. So here is my, my next question because you have jazz guitar, right? And, mm -hmm. and this classical guitar, are you, I know that those are styles, mm -hmm. but do you have guitars that match that sound as well? And will you start bringing those out on tour? So you can be like, this is a classical guitar song. And just play something and then switch over to jazz? I, I've thought about doing where I would like tour and I would try to book like coffee shops and like kind of like classical things mm -hmm. in the morning or you know early afternoon and then at night I would try to book like you know folk punk that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
but never, I haven't really thought of that consistently necessarily. And because it's funny, because every time like I think I'm doing okay with classical guitar, like I'm just a complete beginner. So, you know, I'll watch somebody who has like a PhD in like classical guitar performance, and I'm just like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. No, I suck. <laughs> like, you need some mirror time, my friend. We need to build your self esteem up. No, no, <laughs> no, but then, like, you know, you post a video on, you know, Instagram, and, you know, people will be like, wow, you're amazing. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I'm, so I'm better than some people, and, you know, not as good as other people. So it's um, kind of something you're always trying to, like, hmm. you know, not feel too shitty about your own ability, but also being able to, like, I think it takes a great amount of guts to be able to sit up there by yourself and play an instrument and sing, like gut-wrenching things that have affected you from life. So most humans can't do that. Yeah, no, and it's it's the most naked experience that you know you can really do as a person and be like, hey, these are the things I think about. And like, you know, sometimes my girlfriend will be at a show and I'm just like, oh god, I'm about to play like these three songs about like the three previous chicks, like. <laughs> before we were having sex and like we all know that everybody else's dick got wet before you so shush <laughs> but, but, when, but when you're listening to a song when you're listening to a song about dick getting wet it's it's a different experience that's, that's the next song can you write a song called that <laughs> no 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 i would not dick gets wet yeah <laughs> um how did you transition from ska to this there was never any, I'm like, I'm super weird about music listening, you know, where people will be like, I listen to everything. Like I'm the, that's a of, lie. No, but I'm the <laughs> kind of person who listens to like, whatever, like country EDM. Like one time, one of my friends was playing like techno and we were, it was like this thing we were fucking doing, um, where we had to like type bylaws for like a co-op. And he's like, oh, shit, yeah, no, I know you don't like this kind of music. And I was like, no, dude, like, techno, like, you know, 12, and I'm trying to stay up till 2 a.m. Like, that's fine. Um, and one of the best music advice I ever got was my first guitar teacher. He said, um, if you can't listen to a song and say one good thing about it, that says more about you as a music listener mm -hmm. than the song itself. Mm -hmm. Because it means you can't pick out, like, you know, even the shittiest pop song <laughs> probably has one thing that people listen to and they like. Because otherwise, why would people like it? Right. Like, music's a very universal thing. We've tried to do that with everybody that has come through our door or that we've gotten music for. So there's been some things that I'm like, but this was good. Yeah. And that's Josie's thing. He's like, you always got to be able to say one nice thing about it. Yeah. So that is a good, yeah. good thing. And, like, I've run sound for people, and, like, you always have to be like, hey, that was pretty good the way you did that one thing. And, like, you hated everything else, but, you know, you had to be like, that pedal, great. You know, that flanger in that one song, that was good, what we needed. Good use of the third fret on the sixth string. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. See, but it's training your ear, and then that makes you a better musician, too. Yeah. And it kind of teaches you what you like and what you don't like and, you know, what might I try to incorporate in my own thing. Mm -hmm. So I know that we've reached the top of the hour. Again, this is Noah Green for all Madison, because I fucked that no, up on the last video. <laughs> <laughs> I admit my own faults. 608 <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is 608, not 414. Yeah, I screwed up everything. I posted 414, Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm 608? cool. 608? No, that's great. I like to cultivate the mystique. Of, uh, if you see me set. in Milwaukee, yeah. Right. <laughs> they won't be walking to my own no, apartment. That's, ah. yeah. <laughs> that's good. They can't follow me. Right, yeah. <laughs> so he has music. Music on Bandcamp, it's noahgreen.bandcamp.com, and he also has merchandise, and he says, find him on Facebook, Noah Green, and say, hey man, I want to buy some of your stuff, so you can go, what, piece of shit, but then he'll send it to you anyway. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you can catch him tomorrow, right? Lake Mills? Marshfield. Marshfield. Lake Mills, I'd never go to. Okay. That's awful. My <laughs> and... dad lives in Lake Mills. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like Marshfield. So sorry. <coughs> Marshfield tomorrow <laughs> and on the 25th of May in Sheboygan. 
So without further ado, we will leave you. And next week, we got tons of music. Houston and the Dirty Rats is coming on Tuesday. And then Thursday, we have a band from Chicago called For It All. So thank you for joining us. And catch us next week for lots of music. Okay, thanks. Bye.